Welcome to Walking Tree Brewery in Vero Beach, Florida. I'm here with Brooke and we're gonna talk to you about this awesome brewery and what you need to know if you have never been here before and you wanna come visit. Brooke, can you tell me about the brewery how did it get started? How long has it been in business here in Vero Beach? So we're getting ready to celebrate our eighth anniversary. Uh, it's gonna be May 11th this year. We're doing a big shindig out in the yard music festival, street fest. Cool. Um, so that's a huge milestone for us. Yeah. Um, like all craft breweries, we started in our backyard as home brewers, um, started competing, started winning medals and money and decided to turn it into a business. Um, found this amazing space in 2014. Um, took about two years to build out. We took it off the hands of the city of Vero Beach. Cool. And uh, it is a 1945 Naval Aviation Supply Warehouse. I did uh, not know yeah, that, actually. It's, it's, it's a World War II facility, which is why it's still standing, because they, they don't build things like they used to. So huge blessing. Um, it was really an awesome build out. This is probably one of the biggest DIY projects you've ever been in. <laughs> um, we did a lot of repurposing. We saved a lot of um, a lot of wood, a lot of metal, um, pulled about 70,000 pounds of drywall out of this place uh, over the course of a year. Um, but was it all like... You know, a partitioned oh, yeah. off in oh, here. Oh yeah, uh -huh. yeah. yeah there was I could tons imagine. of. It was like a maze, but it was <laughs> it was it was pretty awesome. So we were really fortunate to be able to get the space, to be able to bring it back to um, kind of the way it originally looked. We when we look at the space here, this is by and large short of the bar. Uh, exactly what it looked like in the 40s. Cool, so restored. And it's got a ton of charm. And like, honestly, the appeal of the place, it's so wide and open and just really cool. And you can see everything that's going on. And yeah. I think like the atmosphere is, aside from the drinks are fantastic, but the atmosphere is what's really, really cool when you come in here. We agree. Yeah, awesome. And I remember, I was here, so I've been in Vera Beach about 10 years, and I do remember when you all were putting all of this together. And I remember there was a waiting period of like, what are they doing? What's it gonna look like? How's it gonna turn out? And I really feel like the community has totally embraced it from day one up until now. So, oh, thanks for saying so. Yeah, it's a really cool spot. I would say a staple at this point. So. That was our goal. Yeah. Yeah. I think you accomplished it. Yeah, yeah. Well, cheers to that one. <laughs> yeah, cheers to cheers that. that one. The community has been amazing. Um, you know, while everyone was watching and waiting and driving by and poking their heads in the door, yeah. um, we were doing the same thing. You know, when is it going to be open? When are we going to get through this? How much longer do we have? Every project, you know, you say, it's going to take a year. It takes, you know, Longer. add 50%. Mm -hmm. um, so it was painstaking to get the doors open, um, to get through all the things that we needed to get through. But once we finally did, um, this, this community, this county and beyond uh, showed up full force. Awesome. I love that. And we actually just did um, a client appreciation event right here. We had it right over there in mm -hmm. that corner in front of the bar um, for like our past clients. We try to do one a couple times a year and we picked Walking Tree for the most recent one. It was just last month. It was a hit. Everybody had a great time. Oh, great. Came and had a beer on us. Um, can you tell me a little bit more about like events that you all have? Because I think that's actually a big thing, at least for me. I look for and I follow you all on social media for events and things that are coming down the line. So we have definitely built a reputation um, in town for making sure that we provide our own sources of entertainment. There are always things that are going on here. Um, we didn't realize um, how much of a meeting space we were going to be for local nonprofits, um, local associations, guilds and whatnot to have meetings and socials here. But one of the things that we are really proud of is that the nonprofit community in this area has really latched on to using our space cool. and coming here to throw their shindigs and yeah. their shenanigans. And so um, anything from birthday parties and baby showers and weddings, which which do happen. I've been at a wedding here. Yeah, yeah. we had, you know, who would want to come to a, I mean, this is an open air warehouse. It can be kind of dirty and gnarly here. I mean, overall, it's only as clean as you can keep keep yeah. it because the doors and windows are always open. Yeah. But um, we have had some beautiful white wedding dresses come through come through this place. They're normally pretty pretty dingy at the bottom, but who's looking who, who's looking at that? And whose isn't at the end yeah. of the night anyways, no matter where you go. You know, my, one of my um, close friends actually had her wedding here, and I remember thinking like, oh, this is going to be interesting, but it was 
years ago, seven years ago now. So you guys were like pretty new open, and they had put a backdrop there, and it was beautiful with the moon. Yep, with yes, the moon. Uh, yes, yes, yep. yeah, I remember that. Yep. That was so, beautiful. It was beautiful, and it was a great time, and it was flexible and flexible space, and it was great. Absolutely. So, so we're we are open to the creativity. Of, of organizations. Obviously, as you can hear the beeping, we are a production facility first and <laughs> foremost. So there's always something going on to, to make the beer happen. But if you can think of it and we can accommodate it, we are down. We're cool. down to try. Cool. Awesome. I love that. And then do you have, I know you mentioned in May, you all are having your eighth anniversary. Do you have anything like coming down the line in the next month or so that people should keep on their radar? Oh yeah. So we're trying to do something a little ridiculous for the St. Baldrick's uh, Cancer Research Foundation okay. on the 13th of April, and it is called the Brew Bod U Bod Olympics. Okay. And so there is a registration. Um, there are registrations on social media. You can easily find it through Walking Tree, but we're doing an MRAP poll, right. which is a team poll, and your team registers. Uh, I think the registration fee is $75. It all goes to the St. Baldrick's Foundation, and MRAP is like a giant tank kind of SWAT vehicle, okay. this giant, huge thing. And you have to pull it? And you have to pull it across the finish line in a certain timed you know, amount. And people come in costumes, and they just get <laughs> really crazy. Um, so the, the day starts off with that. And then we're going to have a, a variety of field games. Yeah, that are field day. In, yeah, yep, mm -hmm. individual participation outside. And then it culminates with a pageant. So we're okay. following a similar vein of, uh, say, Dancing with the Stars, where okay. you register, you get your own fundraising link. And it is um, a little bit silly. So there are categories like the Burly Barrel, Mom Dad, uh, Mom Bod, Dad Bod, Sexy Slims. <laughs> But you can be in any category you want to. So, you know, we're we are certainly not it is your own bod. You can you can decide to say, compete. If somebody else signs you up for a mom bod or dad bod. Then just just go for Embrace it. it. Embrace, Embrace it. Embrace it. Yeah. So it's a, a mixture of costumes and theatrics and coming to show off. Cool. Um, again, those fundraising links, one hundred percent of the funds go straight to St. Baldrick's. We're gonna have some really ridiculous prizes. We have heard um, some people come coming in bringing their We've got a team doing some speedo kind of stuff. We've heard of some circus <laughs> and some some weirdness, but it's going to be a lot of fun. Cool. A lot of individuals at this time of year are getting into their um, challenges, right? You know, yes. they start the new year off, and yeah. some people have made some serious changes in their lives, and so they can use this as an opportunity to like fundraise for uh, a good cause and yeah. come show off the progress that they've made. Yeah. And then the antithesis of it being the human that's like, you know what? I'm just living my best life, <laughs> and I'm going to come show off my sexy beer bod um, for a good cause. Yeah. So it's going to be ridiculous. There's going to be a ton of uh, free beer for a year prizes. We've got a bunch of neat um, supporters that are coming in and giving away some cool prize packages that are local. So it'll be a fun day. So April 13th. 13th. Okay. And we find it online. Absolutely. Cool. I love that. I love ridiculous. The more ridiculous, the better. Like, that's, why not? Oh, well, yeah. <laughs> you got to have fun. Like, that's one of the things, which is going off on a tangent here, but like, after I had kids and all the responsibilities and the work and then to my like adult life, and I just stopped having fun. And now I'm in the place in my life where I'm like, we're just having fun. Like, there's gotta be fun. Cheers. Let's, yeah. We gotta I'll have some fun. I'll drink to that. <laughs> Just piggybacking off of talking about upcoming events, what are some of people's favorite events or your most pop popular events like that you host through the year? Because I know that you guys do a lot of like recurring annual things. Yes. So let me see if I just line them out in order. Like anniversary. You don't have to get every one of them. But. Anniversary is always a big deal. Yeah. Um, we give back to the community by really reducing our beer prices. So. Everything's five bucks cool. um, all day long. We bring in a bunch of cool music. We always have kind of a, a new and different theme. Of course, there are always water slides out there and dunk tanks for charity events. We move into Oktoberfest, and Oktoberfest yeah, always cool. seems to be a very, very big deal here. Yep. Um, and people come in there like leader Leader hosen, and <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, my personal two favorites, and, and I think they've really kind of stood out in the community, is our, our Halloween event. Um, 
Um, we put a lot of work into the theatrics of that night. Yeah. Um, we partner with our local pride organization um, and do a lot of vignettes and photo opportunities that oh. are in here. Last year, um, my husband, he's still not talking to me for the amount of glitter that still is kind of... <laughs> that he had a vacuum. That he still <laughs> finds. We had a 18-foot uh, functioning glitter dragon for our MC, uh, Shalita Taylor, to go up and, and host the night. But that party is always amazing um, and, and, and wonderful. And then we do a curated uh, Craftsman Bazaar. In December, I was and, yep. I went. I've been the last two years. Yeah. I really like that. We one, bring yeah. in Santa Claus and some musicians and and um, some of the local school choir groups that sing their Christmas carols and really just bring in the season. And it it kind of surrounds the biggest Christmas tree in the county. It takes us three days to decorate that bad boy. I believe it. It goes uh -huh. all the way to the ceiling. So yeah, I really do love that one. I'm gonna have to put Halloween on my radar this year. I've had little kids at home, but now they're getting a little older so I can start doing a more adult things. Um, but that sounds fun. And I do really love the bazaar. And I feel like too, just piggybacking off of the bazaar, you bring in really skilled people. Like it's not just trinket stuff that people are walking around booth to booth. It's like very well handcrafted items and homemade items. So depending on you, on who you ask, um, you're right. I'm very particular about yeah. curating um, that show um, and and any others that we do. Um, and the reason being is, you know, we put a lot of hard work into our beer. Yeah, it is a skill set. It is a, a, a brewer is a master chef. Yeah. Um, and and this is our craft and it takes a lot of hard work. We just don't throw a bunch of uh, ingredients into a mash tun and cross our fingers hoping what will come out. Yeah. And so uh, we really want that reflected when we curate um, craft shows and art shows to make sure that we have this place in the middle where maybe these artisans or craftspeople don't necessarily have themselves in a place where they can be in a fine arts show. Mm -hmm. You know, they're they're not moving two, three, five thousand dollar pieces. Yeah. But they have spent a lot of time teaching themselves a trade or or a material. It's reflected in the work yeah. and it's affordable and approachable for yes. the average consumer. That's exactly what I like. It you just encompassed everything that I was thinking Sometimes about. Sometimes it. it doesn't make me that popular though. Sometimes people are very sensitive when they they, they make I things. I think <laughs> you guys do good though, but you're right. It's it's like very affordable and accessible things. Um, and very well crafted, in my opinion, from, and I'm an artist too, and I pay and I make and I craft and I think it's good. So anyways, moving on, but I really do like, and I okay. really do love the events that you all host here. And that's kind of why I'm doubling down on that and asking a lot of questions because I think that's such a value to the community that you don't get in a lot of other places. So. Well, Vero Beach is, is and, and this county is, is seems to be on the tail end of the cool stuff that that mm -hmm. that the world is doing, yeah. you know. And it's a small town. Thing. It is I'm a from small, a small town yeah. in North Carolina, and it's like it's you don't want to diss it. It's not like behind the times, but it's. <laughs> like we're you're right we're like chasing I don't think it. being behind the times is necessarily dissonant it's more like okay <laughs> it's coming who's gonna be first yeah so why don't people like us that are innovating and thinking forward start bringing those things into the community because there are people and demographics that are beginning to notice this town 100% and who enjoy that and look for that yeah a hundred percent. I agree with you. So we are in a brewery. Brooke, can you tell me about the beer? Yeah. So we what, what are. What makes it different? What makes it different? So you want the vertical pitch. Yeah. So um, <laughs> one of the things that's really important to Walking Tree is supporting all craft beer. Independent craft that is owned privately is not part of the big macro scene. Is very important to people in this industry. Mm -hmm. That comes with a variety of flavors, interests and where you can go to craft breweries all over the world and get a very broad range of flavor profiles. Our interest is sticking very tightly to the classic styles okay. and making sure that we give our version of classic recipes, whether they are an American lager or our Florida wheat, which technically isn't a style, but shh, don't tell anyone. <laughs> <laughs> um, or even bringing in, you know, very ancient European 
um, recipes. Okay. But doing them doing them the way they were inherently designed to be. Okay. We're not known as a more of a hype brewery um, where we're doing an immense flavor load on things. Um, I've been to some of those that I know what you're talking about. Yeah. And it it's cool to do, but it is really nice to have like those foundational flavors and and consistency. You know yeah. what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. So we are we're tried and true. We like to do things on on repeat. Even a lot of our seasonals. Um, for example, right now we've got a really cool sour line that starts to really vet itself out during the spring through the summer. Um, our Councilman Jam, which is a blackberry raspberry sour, Pantalones de Guava, um, which is a guava sour, and and then the ever popular sassy flamingo, the dark dark cherry um, sour, and you can get all of those at your local grocery stores here in town um, as they come out cyclically. But the core branding is is really what has made us known, stuck in the industry, and given us the ability to kind of grab a hold of our market share. I love it. That yeah. makes perfect sense. It's beautiful. Mwah. You don't have to do. Mwah. You don't have to do all the fluffy stuff, right? You can. Well, you know, it. it you do if that's. If that's who you are, then that's what you have to do. We've just, that's not ever been, the, that's not the path that we chose. Yeah. Perfect. I love it. Well said. Um, is there anything else that we haven't already covered that you want the community or anybody who's reaching this video, which is on our YouTube page, to know about this business, this location, this brewery, the people who work here. Sure. Um, Walking Tree is so grateful to be part of, of this community. If you've been here before, thanks for sticking through and, and watching this. If you haven't been here before, come to this area. Um, we are a part of a re revitalization project for this industrial zone, the new neighborhood, which I think this will be the first time it's said um, like this, is, is called Sova the South of Vera Airport District. We're expecting a lot of neat things to be coming into this area over the next couple I of years. That. It'll it'll grow. Um, we are excited to be part of, of this neighborhood and we are just grateful for everyone here that comes in and supports us, drinks the beer, buys it out in the world. Um, we couldn't say more about, about our customers. I love that. You are very well spoken. <laughs> Easy peasy. But thank you so much. Um, I have really enjoyed speaking with you. I love this business. I love this local business. I think, again, to me, it's a staple here in Bureau Beach now and will be will continue to be going forward. Phenomenal. I want everybody to come and visit it and see for themselves and find something that they love here. So thanks for taking the time out of your busy schedule to let us come yeah. in and share it. You too. And can you tell in closing, can you tell us um, when are you open? What are your hours and what days and hours? Most of the time we are open seven days a week, certain holidays. Um, that's, that's not a thing. We need a break too. Uh, Monday through Thursdays, we open at 3 p.m. Um, on Fridays, Saturdays, and Sundays, we open at noon. Um, and always live music on Fridays and Saturday nights. Yep. Um, and stay tuned because a restaurant's coming soon. Ooh, exciting. Ah. I love that. Cheers. Cheers. Thank you. Thank you.